are back, and now it's time to find out who's going to be the last person to make it out of Group G. Is it Dragon or is it Casper? We already saw Casper take out Dragon in the initial match, but Dragon looking pretty strong versus Striker. We'll see if he can get a bit of redemption here. Now, I got a question for you, Gypsy, because I this picture that Dragon has is yeah. quite hilarious. What do you think he was looking at when he took that photo? Was he was he dropping the drone line, going for a storm drop? Did he just take this photo after bashing Striker? What was it? I don't know. I've seen that picture so many times, and not just that, but there's a lot of clown emotes going around with that face on there. And like, I know shoot or I don't know who puts stuff. There's like a picture of a close up picture of that with a mustache. But actually a very iconic picture. And I think the only picture ever taken to this day of a dragon, very elusive. Not many people know what he looks like. This is the only picture we have of him in the history of humanity. So I think maybe that was uh, probably after he got a couple DTs into someone's mineral line and swiped them and then kind of got out because you can see he's got a mischievous look going. But Casper... You know, AKA Crime Boss, this guy, you, you know, not many people know, but he looks like a G because he is a G because he's got, I mean, he's big G Grime Boss, but he also does uh, some sick, he's actually a rapper. So you can go up on YouTube. I'm sure he would want me to talk about this because, you know, it's nice advertisement for him, but you can see his kind of music videos on YouTube if anyone was wondering about that. But, I, I like I actually I like uh, these pictures. I think uh, we've had some very questionable some some of the pictures are pretty hilarious actually in BSL 10. Yeah, every time I see Dragon's picture, it reminds me of Skew, a very old school Terrence. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. They actually look identical. Like every time. Yeah, I see yeah, it, yeah. That actually Skew. So, <laughs> I, I, man, I wish he came back and played. But as far as this match, it's going to be Dragon versus Casper. Casper looked really strong in the first game, got away with a greedy third base. It's just something he does. He just somehow always makes it work. But Dragon looking really good coming off a of victory versus Striker. And in my experience versus Dragon, he's just super solid, but he was not on his A game in the Eclipse game. So hopefully now that his hands are warmed up, he's going to turn it around. You know, we are in a Discord, private Discord, where Dragon has been there. And I know in previous months he was talking about, I think he hurt his hands. So hopefully they've recovered by now. Not too sure how much he practices these days. But I know that when there is a tournament, he definitely tries his best to get as much practice in. So maps like Optimizer, even if it's not in the ladder pool, for sure, this guy's gonna have a decent amount of experience. So if we see Optimizer again, or something like Bubbles that is not often played, you know for sure he's gonna have a lot of experience. And I would tend to favor Dragon on a map like Optimizer, even though we saw players like Koget and Cryok use this map very well, getting so many tanks and just decimating Protoss armies. But we are going to be getting into our game right now. Casper versus Dragon. Can Casper seal the deal, make it out going 3-0 or 3-1 versus Dragon? Or is there going to be Dragon getting some redemption here and being the only player to make it out for Canada? So in the bottom left, in the brown, Repping the arrows tag, it is Grime Boss or Casper. In the bottom right, we've got the Canadian Hope. It is a dragon. And yeah, I mean, I know, um, especially I've been calling Casper Grime Boss, Grime Boss Casper. Uh, it is the same person, guys, in case people were wondering in the chat. I, you know, for The thing is, he's using Grime Boss in game and and you know on his twitch he actually uses grime boss and personally i think grime boss is an epic name <laughs> i love the name uh it's i mean casper's also a sick name but grime boss is where it's at so in case you guys were wondering why do we keep calling casper grime boss and grime boss casper i mean that's the same player it's not like there's three players in the game but yeah optimizer i mean this is i'll say this i i feel like dragons Dragon, as you pointed out, Nayuk, and Dragon's always practicing. Uh, I know he's also busy with other things uh, in real life, like he's not just always on StarCraft, but he always finds time to play practice games, and he's just a very disciplined guy, and very smart too. 
So for sure he has something planned out on this map. Uh, but Casper, you know, I think Casper is more of a, an intuitive player. I think he's not the type of player that prepares as extensively as someone like Dragon. But you can see that he's very strong just mechanically and tactically he makes a lot of units. He can go for, he has these ideas. Maybe his builds aren't always extremely well refined, but I feel like just his gameplay in general is pretty solid from watching these two games. I mean, really, he he, he does play really strong macro games. So we're going to have to see, you know, what triumphs here. Is it going to be that preparation? Or is it going to be that intuitiveness? But Optimize are definitely a map that you need to at least be acquainted with. We saw yesterday La Abuela taking the one gas at the bottom of his main. I don't want to see that again because the bottom gas, of course, only has 1,000 gas. So hopefully we don't see stuff like that. But these players definitely must have played a couple practice games on this map at this point. We see that Dragon, despite having no success with the Zealot in the Eclipse game, has decided that that's the way to go, and already we've got shenanigans because this is Grime Boss continuing to mine gas, and versus someone that is very sneaky. When you see a wall, this may already be a tip-off that this could be some one base play optimizer we saw the other day where you can actually siege what the high ground overlooking your main. You remember that top left? Yeah. Yeah, I think it was body positioning tanks on the high ground and then yeah. using some tanks on the low ground and just the combination was super strong. Now that's not going to be the case this time because this is going to be a two fact. So immediately I'm checking the player names because I'm pretty sure unless I see Artosis mentioned <laughs> in the players, you don't ever see two fact. I mean, two factory. It's a strong build though, honestly, because the thing is, you don't have to hit right away. You can hit at... So the idea is that Terran in this matchup, regardless of what the build they do is, uh, they always kind of threaten the three tank push, sometimes four tanks, with Vulture speed and Mines follow up and just two factory kind of Vulture behind it. Whether you're expanding, whether you're staying on one base, it can always come. Now the, the strength of this one base timing as I say that, though, Grind Boss is going for one machine shop and one without, and he's getting the mines really early. I don't like this variation at all. We'll see how it works for him. But this is, you know, it's definitely difficult to stop. Oh. You still have to have... Oh, and actually a Citadel of Doom coming from, from Dragon. Well, this was not a response to what he scouted because the Citadel's too far along, so, so it looks like Dragon had just already planned out that he was going to go for some DT play. Now, maybe he saw Casper use this particular strategy on this map before because this is not Dragon S. This is not something that you see ever from him. And DT follow-up versus this particular opener is going to be amazing. It, once one DT comes, well, as I say that, this push is super fast. Dragon yeah. might actually just insta-lose. I was going to say, Casper went for uh, just the fastest possible push, just one tank. And this is probably the best push variation of this you could have against what Dragon is doing. Because look, he doesn't have as many units as he normally would. I've seen Dragon actually do this uh, build before. He does Citadel into Templar sometimes off the expansion because it's not really all in. You're just getting quick Arbiters behind it. And the DTs can sometimes steal you games. So... You know, the thing is, this pylon wall is completely kind of oh, no uh, stopping the Terran push from occurring. And at this point, he's buying so much time that DTs are going to be out. But luckily for Casper, he actually is going to have two factory vulture production behind this. So he can definitely lay down mines. But it doesn't look like Casper even wants to take an expansion. It doesn't look like he actually wants to play this map at all. He's just going to go for the killing bow. But this is not going to work because he has absolutely no detection at the front. So once... The mines go down. This these uh, this army is going to be ripe for the taking if the DTs get on top of it. Yeah, I think that we're about to see Casper tap out pretty soon. There's no eBay in sight. DTs are just going to swipe down all of these units. A mine drag may even potentially just eliminate everything instantly. And there's still no mines. Two DTs are out on the map. He's got to be careful to swipe down. Oh, actually, that's a big mine hit right there. Oh and the my. DT actually takes up. Both of the DTs went down. And those are not units that build very quickly. But really good goon control right there. He eliminates both the tanks behind this. Casper even pulled two SCVs, so really he's not even mining that efficiently his main, and there's no command center anywhere near 
I don't in sight. I don't see command center start. I don't see it in his main. So he's way behind. Yeah, this game. I mean, Niagan is pretty much over. Like Casper, if he expanded behind this, it would have been fine because he would have had. Yes, his expansion would have been a bit later, but he would have had two factory vulture production to keep the Protoss contained. But look, he even lost all his tanks, all three tanks. Now he has no tank defense in his base. He's still rallying. The problem is that, um, you know, in this kind of craziness, Dragon got his robo down. He finished his robo. He's making a shuttle. So now DT drop is going to come into Casper's main. And how does Casper deal with DTs in his main? I mean, his academy is about to finish, but since he only has one command center, he's only going to have one scan to work with. The eBay just now goes down, but that's way too late. The shuttle is already on the way. And it, I just don't see how Casper lives through this. Well, we saw Casper have ridiculous holds versus Jay Yoon for the last 10 minutes of the Reap the Storm game, but he's going to need another miracle here because not only does he not have an eBay, not only does he only have one comp set, there's a shuttle here. So once he unloads, he better kill the DT or he better kill the shuttle, but with no anti-air, no armory, you know the shuttle's not dying. Okay, we're playing with fire with mines right here. Okay, he just unloads, unloads directly in the mineral line, and this is just going to be GG pretty much. There's no way you can deal with DTs with a shuttle. If it was no way to load them back up, well, he, I can't even believe he got one of them. I mean, that's way better than I was expecting. Oh my god, he's actually going to finish this turn also, so I'm going to keep playing this game out, but because he had to make the eBay, and because he had to make that turret, he still hasn't ha started his command center, and Protoss is ahead almost double the worker count using way more mineral patches than the Terran so his economy is basically out of this world and I mean oh, Casper's gonna get a lot of vultures into Dragon's base now the thing is Dragon actually ran out of goons he still has three dragoons I don't know if he has an observer just yet he does have an observer so an observer is probably on the way but these goons are gonna get Massive amounts of damage, but they really have to basically kill every probe in existence because look, it's 34 probes to 18 SCVs. And Dragon actually does have an observer come out finally. He has two observers and Dragoons to work with. And really, Casper is still going to get a couple of worker kills here. But remember, he doesn't have a command center building just yet. So he really, I mean, it's it's like that Jayun game. Maybe he can make it happen, but it's just so hard from this position as Terran he just doesn't have an expansion coming so like the Stargate is already on the way for Dragon there's a DT in Casper's main and although Casper is going to get some counterplay here he's still so far behind yeah and now a counterattack is coming from Dragon but he does have to be a bit careful that you know Casper might backstab him with a couple of vultures and vultures are some of the highest DPS units in the game when dealing with workers so that is a potential possibility that Dragon has to be weary of, but this one DT is just so annoying because, again, there's no anti-air. The shuttle's just never gonna die. The, the DT's probably never gonna die. As I say that, of course it dies because that's just the cast of curse, you know? <laughs> yeah, you got some questionable calls, Nyokin, but I can't blame you because I'm having the same thoughts. And Dragon, I mean, the thing is, yeah, these DTs are dying. Casper is living. But he's in literally an unwinnable situation. I mean, he still doesn't have an expansion. He's only on two tanks, three vultures. He's making units out of two factories. Now his command center just now is going down. But look, the Arbiter Tribunal is on the way for Protoss. And there's no natural insight. I mean, I'm going to sound like a broken record again, like I did in the game of Jayun and Casper. But... Literally, it's so hard to see Casper winning from this position. It's just such a hole he's dug into. It really would take kind of a tremendous effort from Dragon throwing this game for Casper to come back. I mean, truly, this game is really, really out of reach for the Terran player. Well, we did see Casper try hiding a base on the Eclipse game, and he got away with it. So I would like to see... Dragon just send an observer or something across every single base to make sure that doesn't happen. As I say that, we see that he is doing that. He knows that that's the only way that Casper could get back into this game is he has some type of hidden economy somewhere out on the map. 
there's going to be nothing actually out on the map because we see there's no command center anywhere anywhere it's just literally dragging miles and miles ahead arbiter comes out i actually would have liked to see carriers because i feel like a recall botch could potentially you know get casper some breathing room and then he takes a third base whereas carriers uh, there's no way you can go deny it right so it just slowly builds up over and over and over and over but really it, it doesn't matter it's 48 workers to 22 scvs the econ is absolutely bananas for dragon he's starting to take his third base too everything is going extremely well for him finally casper gets up his natural at least it's optimizer right where if there's a potential map where you can come back maybe with the extra few resources you have this is gonna be the map but it's a tall order yeah it's such a tall order that uh i just <laughs> i don't know man i mean dragon's up 50 supply twice the supply he has a third base still up to twice the worker count and i mean you know caster he can't even add factories he has to add his starport here because you know arbiters are on the way his upgrade is halfway done but he's still on 00 at 13 minutes well 13 minutes into the game i mean i know this was a crazy opening but it's just i think i mean it is a tournament game so you can't blame casper for playing this out at all i wonder if he knows just how far behind he is he scans the third base he probably also scanned the main base knows arbiters are coming like i said so he knows just how bad of a position he's in but i mean you know he's gonna keep playing this out he's gonna have a lot of time to think about the next game you know i don't know if he thinks this is a winnable game but yeah i mean it is a tournament game you kind of have to stay in here he's gonna have more time to think about the next game but really dra they're both kind of just going through the motions and dragon's gonna come out with the big recall it looks like he's going straight for recall and I mean, this game might not end right away because it is Terran. You can't just A move into the natural like that. Uh, but what can Terran do from here? Well, Terran's doing what Terran should do. It's going to be Tank Man. I saw that his army comp is about nine tanks and two vultures. We already saw how well Cryok and Koget traded on here. So I think this is exactly what you should do. He's got his starport up. He's got his science facility coming in. So he's going to be starting plus two weapon pretty quickly. First two Arbiters are already going to be out. Stasis is also already available for the Arbiter. It's got 120 energy. Vultures get by. Every probe kill matters here. Like this is how Casper can get back into the game. Remember it was like 20 SCVs to 50. Now it's 55 to 37. Slowly Casper creeping back up. It all comes down to the recall, really. If Dragon doesn't aggressively take bases, like, I don't see him aggressively taking top right. If he fails a couple recalls, for sure, Casper can get back into the game. I do realize he's getting doubled in supply. But if there's ever a scenario where Casper can come back, that's one way that it happens is a botched recall over and over and over. Now, I think I see some type of drop going to bottom right, or is that just an observer? Yeah, it looks like that's actually Brown moving to Dragon's main. This is going to be a Vulture drop into the probe line again. Yeah, the Vulture drop is, like you said, Naoki, and he's basically going to run around with Vultures while building up his tank count. Hopefully he can kill enough probes to make a difference in this game. But, you know, I mean, he is climbing back up in, in, in the worker lead or in the worker count. But at the same time, Dragon, he's just macroing out a maxed army he has a fourth base now he has arbiters gaining energy and the thing is casper is going to have a decent army here but at the same time not going to have kind of the production that you would want to have at this point i'm assuming like he's still only on three factories there's no way you can just keep making tanks like that uh without uh sacrificing something and usually it's the factory count so looks like casper is going to go for i mean it's it's I doubt he's going to go for a, a timing attack because he just doesn't have the vultures. He doesn't have the production behind it. I'm assuming he's pushing out here to maybe take a third base. If he goes further than this without vulture support, yes. Okay, so he's just going to siege out outside of his main to allow access for that third base. But Dragon, he sees that the Terran army is basically no longer in its base. He's just going to go for this. It doesn't really matter if he trades poorly. He's going to... He has... He knows he has an overwhelming supply advantage so might as well just trade it 
for a bunch of tanks and reset the Terran army. Here comes some six stasis go out on to six tanks. And Dragon's just gonna plow through this army easy peasy. And I think we're gonna see GG coming anytime, any second now. Yeah, down 100 in supply. We knew this was gonna happen. There's just way too much Protoss. Casper's gonna tap out, and Dragon is gonna go up 1 0 in the series. And now he's one game away from making it out. And I think that was just a big mistake from Casper to go for the aggressive opener, but also. Dragon got a bit lucky there going straight into DTs because he is not known for that. So he must have had that either planned for this map or some sort of read on Casper because in my experience versus Dragon, that almost never happens. Yeah, I mean, I don't know because uh, Dragon has done that against me. So like, I, don't, I, I wasn't surprised seeing that build. Uh, and again, it's not really that all in, especially if you're going... DTs after your Nexus, the the main thing is usually you kind of skip Robo and go straight Arbiters if uh, the DTs do no damage, but um, you know, not surprising seeing that pulled out. I, did, I was surprised by Casper's variation of Two Factory because kind of the most standard variation of Two Factory that we usually see is uh, the double add-on into three or four tanks and then you get double Vulture upgrades and actually what Casper was doing was much better against something like what Dragon was doing, the DTs, because it, it hits before DTs are out. And you primarily have Vultures with mines with just the one tank. But because Protoss went for DT so fast, they don't have that many units. But Dragon very smartly actually made a pylon wall. And that pylon wall gave him so much time that he completely stopped that attack. And that pylon wall, I don't think many players would have thought about doing that. So very, very, very smart from Dragon. And because of that, he, you know, smacked down the attack. And surprisingly here, we're going to see Reap the Storm for game two. So let's get into game two. Casper versus Dragon. Casper has to win this to stay alive. Dragon could win this and advance out of this group. In the bottom middle in the red, we have our Russian Terran. It is Casper. And in the, what is this, like 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock position, we have the purple Protoss. It is Dragon. And, you know, the thing is, the fact that out of all the maps in the map pool, Casper picked this map is a bit mind-boggling to me. Yeah, this is a bit unusual because this is not the map I would pick. And... Casper does like aggressive plays, and this map is pretty good for drops, so because of that, I think if I was Dragon, I would expect that to be a potential opener for, for Casper. But really, I'm a bit confused by this pick also. I'm surprised he didn't pick Sylphid or Polyphoid. I guess he doesn't want to get into a big macro game with, with Dragon. But we'll see what Casper has in store. He did just pull off a two-fact. It really went pretty poorly for him, but now that Dragon has shown that he's willing to go for a one base play at least once, I don't think Dragon's going to go for it again. So even though I'm I'm not a big fan of two facts, I wouldn't actually mind it in this particular scenario to see it being pulled out twice in a row. Oh, it's a 10-10-10, baby. Yeah, not, not surprising. He's going to go for the strong FP probably, and I mean, it could also be a strong two fact, but usually with 10-10-10, your, your economy isn't that good to support fast two. I mean, I don't know, dude. I'm I'm not a fuck. I I'm not a, an expert on ten ten ten. I don't know what you think about ten ten ten. I think it's usually used for strong FD, right? Yeah. So ten 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 can be strong FD. It can also be a weird variation of a two pack where you build up like five tanks. You get siege mode and sit on the high ground, build a bunker, fake light. You're going to command center, but never go for it. But I don't think that would work particular what particularly well versus Dragon because he is somebody that will poke with the goon to make sure that the command center is there. So this is probably going to be like eight or nine Marines. And this is a really strong push. It comes about 20 seconds faster than a normal just factory. So that means he's going to have about one and a half tanks. Of course, half, half a tank doesn't exist. But if he just waits and delays his push from a normal push, like 10 seconds, he's going to have two tanks compared to one so it is super super strong 
And remember, I think this is actually a pretty good mind game because on Eclipse, he showed an FD and didn't use it. So now he's going for what looks like an FD and it's gonna be an even stronger FD. So I think that if Dragon under prepares, thinking about the Eclipse game, he may just instantly lose. Yeah, but at the same time, Grime Boss basically had one of the best macro maps for Terran in the pool, which was Optimizer. And instead of playing a macro game on there, he played a very aggressive game. Even game one, he was being aggressive with the FD, so I I, sus I think Dragon probably suspects there to be early game aggression here, so maybe he's going to be able to adjust there. Now, he did go for the Zealot Scout again, no Probe Scout. If he actually went the Probe Scout this game, that's the one thing that sometimes you, Terran players could abuse against Dragon, because he's consistently never probe scouting he always just gets the zealot to be safe against stuff like proxy racks and then uses it to scout so he's just gonna go straight for the nexus he has absolutely no scouting information he doesn't know anything that the terran is doing he does have two goons and one zealot but i don't think that's gonna be enough to stop a push of the magnitude that grime boss is like producing right now yeah, and mines are coming in, so everything looks very normal. We do have to wait and see if this is going to be a second tank or if it's just going to be a vulture. For now, it looks like it's just going to be one tank, about eight marines, and a vulture. There it is. So once the tank falls, there's still going to be a lot of DPS in the marines, but of course the marines aren't going to have range. So if the goons are in any critical mass number, such as even three, they're going to be able to deal with these marines very easily, but now... Oh no, he's going to lose a Dragoon for free! And you can't lose that versus an FD. Now luckily for him, I guess, is on Reap the Storm, he at least has high ground, but he only has one actual goon out. He's going into 3-gate ob. I think he is actually going to lose his Nexus here. There's just so much DPS, shield battery going down, but marine DPS is actually crazy. The probes are being pulled off. I don't know how much that's actually going to help. The vultures already have mines too. Here comes that zealot in probes. Let's see if he can actually find those. Oh, he picks up one of the mines instantly. Zealots already did really good probes around, but there's only two goons here. Yeah, that was a really good surround. But the thing is, there's so many marines, so many vultures that the probes just get instantly melted. And now the problem is behind this, there's going to be rally vultures, and we have no units as Protoss. So. You know, Casper can just start laying mines absolutely everywhere. We have no OBS in sight because we went for the three gates kind of in panic, realizing this FD is coming. And Casper is just basically in, in, in such a strong position. He's going to take his expansion behind this. So unlike Optimizer, actually, you know, has a more of a mid-game focus. And this really was just an FD push. I mean, he did cut a lot of SCVs for, to make this work. So... It's not like the Terran economy is where it should be right now, but he did so much damage and basically clearing half the Protoss' probes. And at this point, Dragon is stuck with three gates that he can't even produce out of because he only has four, 14 probes. And, you know, quickly, this is looking very bad for Protoss. I mean, I don't think Casper is going to be Oh, able no! To if he hits that mine, this game's basically over now. Casper can basically move out onto Dragon's just... main and he just GG's, yeah. <laughs> He just instantly GG, so when Casper needed to win the most, he clutches it with a strong FD push, and that's going to push it to game three. And even if Dragon had lost the Nexus, if he hadn't lost those six probes in the beginning, I think he was still okay because Casper spent a lot of resources to go for that. Now, as an observer, I, I, I see what's going on, but of course, in the moment, you don't know that. But Casper hitting a really slick timing in the vulture positioning to block the goons from being able to retreat to make sure that they hit mines. That was fantastic. I love his mine positioning, absolutely incredible. So now Dragon's gonna be feeling the pressure too and clearly the pressure didn't get to Casper. So we're gonna see game three here. I wonder what map pick Dragon's gonna go for. I think he needs to go for a big map here. Don't let Casper pick something or don't, don't pick a map where Casper can just push you instantly. Optimizer is actually a small map too. So I hope we see like Polypoid or Bubbles, which is Fighting Spirit, because those are two relatively large maps. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised that Casper just vetoes Polypoid. Okay, there we didn't go. Veto Polypoid. So Dragon picks Polypoid, and Polypoid is going to be the bane of a lot of the Terran players in this. Uh, especially playing TVP because they can no longer rely on 
the timing pushes. But nice pick here from Dragon going into the rubber match between Dragon and Casper. Winner gets out of his group. Loser goes home. So let's get right into it. In the bottom right, coming off of a really solid timing, it is Casper. And in the top left in the... Uh, what is that? I mean, it's a Protoss. And it's Dragon. But what color is that? Um, oh yeah, this is... Uh, no, it's not. Olive, dark green. Oh, no, no, it's olive. Don't worry about it. I like this color, though. It's really nice. But what I was going to say before I realized that it would probably be better to talk about it once we're in the game. <laughs> Polypoid, I think, is going to be the big test of a lot of Terran players in this, especially TVP. Because, like I pointed out yesterday, a lot of the non-Korean Terran players, they like going two base, but two base time, timing, 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 timing. That being said, Casper did go for that fast third base um, on Eclipse. Um, so maybe we're going to see that from, I mean, clearly Casper is not afraid of going into three bases, but on this map, the point is on this map, it's just so hard to hit an early game, early mid game timing, or just a mid game timing because of the massive high ground at each player's is third mineral only. That high ground is such a defensive position. Yeah, it's almost impossible for Terran to move up the ramp. Dra uh, Dragoons on the high ground, literally any time Terran has to fight up high ground, the tanks don't hit nearly as well, nearly as effectively. And if Zealots can get on top of it, it's just going to be an easy white for the Protoss. So we'll see if Casper is going to continue to go with the trend. Is he going to go with the two or a two base push? Is he going to try and take a third base pretty quickly and follow up with another 1-1 one -one timing? I really want to see what dragon's gonna put his uh, life on is it gonna be another two base arbiter that we saw basically come out on opti optimizer is it gonna be more macro play are we gonna see carriers again we do see that C casper only has one mining gas so it is actually gonna be an expansion this time another zealot coming out i'm just very surprised that every single game we've seen this zealot come out but really the zealot has been negligible it's done nothing really because casper's built so many marines anyways that it almost instantly dies every single time i see an engagement like what we just saw in reap the storm the scv got in front of the zealot and then it just got blown up almost immediately so curiously another zealot coming out like well as you pointed out last game it seems that dragons just doesn't want to scout so he's using the zealot every time but really other than that it's not been that effective for him yeah, this is one thing I really dislike about Dragon's play in general, is this is his go-to PPT. He almost, without fail, this is what he does every single game. Uh, and the Zealot is never meant to do damage. Like, he's using everything to scout. He's just trying to play as stable as possible. Now, it's really nice for Protoss not to scout with the early, early probe, because it really ac accelerates your build. But at the same time, it just means Terran can do whatever they want. Uh, in the last game, we saw exactly the weakness of this type of play from Dragon. This very low limited, like limited information play. Dragon, though, uh, I really would have liked for him to run past the bunker just to see what was going on in Casper's main. But Dragon's going to be happy with just confirming the command center there. So, but yeah, last game we saw that basically Casper completely punished that build through his build selection or the early zealot i mean you know dragon had no idea that was coming and he just straight up died to it because his scouting dragoon got caught out so fortunately on polypoid a strong fd like that is very unlikely because look at how look at the rush distances between the cross spawns i mean it's just absolutely massive now casper is going to get a rescout here he's going to see that it's a command center or i mean a, a nexus so casper knows that dragon's playing standard dragon knows that casper is playing standard and at this point you know the deviations are going to come in for the builds at least for protoss we see that dragon's not going for that citadel he's actually going for a robo and 
Casper is actually going for a quick second factory, no academy just yet. So this usually is indicative of a push, but I really don't like this in these positions because look, they're cross spawns. He's gonna have to walk all the way to the other side of the map, which is gonna give Protoss so much more time to get units. And this is only a two tank push. I don't think this is gonna do anything, Nyokin. And, and if anything, it might backfire onto Casper. Well, this seems to be what Casper loves to do. Goes against the trend or makes a bit of a modification. As you pointed out, the trend right now is to go for three tanks. That means it hits at around 615 when they get across the map. But we see that Casper is going to hit about 20 to 30 seconds faster. And that might be all he needs to push through. There's four Marines here, two tanks. Mines are already being set up by these vultures there's only four goons which is the magic number to one shot marines and two shot tanks but look now he has six and now these tanks are going to be picked off or almost one of them goes down but now with the observer out as you said this push got denied pretty easily but it's casper he's got vultures sharking around he may be able to find an opening all five of those goons were slightly out of position but he doesn't go in for any probe kills Fast Citadel coming in. I love this follow-up. It's going to be about an 11 minute Arbiter stasis timing. So this is going to be two base Arbiter, one of the builds that I find to be the hardest to play against. And I think this is going to be very good versus somebody like Casper who loves to do timings. Arbiter is obviously the ultimate counter to timings from Terran. So it kind of forces Casper to play upgrade style. Otherwise, he's going to be punished pretty easily. Damn. Uh, looking at Casper's build, I'm really curious. I'm not. <laughs> I'm gonna say this straight up. I don't know if he's like been watching me stream recently, but he's literally doing close to the identical build that I like doing a lot in TVP, which is the two factory into a small push like this just to get vultures out onto the map. He got siege mode behind, didn't commit the tanks, got his armory as soon as he pushed out. And usually I like to go with three tanks. But this is so similar to what I like doing. It would be really funny to me if we actually both had the same idea on how to play this game. Uh, or, you know, he actually has, <laughs> has been watching the stream. But it's really a really solid way to play. Like he got a bunch of mines out onto the map. So he sees what's going on. He didn't lose any tanks, importantly. So that was good for him. It didn't really backfire. And now he's taking a fast third base. He has upgrades going. This usually is a bit greedy against a lot of, for example, if you do this on ladder, you're gonna get heavily punished because a lot of Protosses don't play this kind of quick Arbiter timing into a third base. So reading Dragon beautifully here, Casper is, he's basically setting himself up as well as you possibly could as a Terran. And he's basically playing a very clean three base uh, build. So, you know, as much complaining as I was doing earlier about when's a Terran player going to play a three base build, uh, you know, Casper pulling through and I really like absolutely everything that he's doing with his build just now getting the eBay. He knows it's Arbiters, he scanned. Now he's probably going to piece it together that there's also a third base just from the gateway count. He only sees two gates. So this is basically the dream scenario for Terran. The fact that he took his third base that fast. Now, it could have been even better if he actually expanded to the gas expansion, but having the, the mineral only means that he's going to be able to have the high ground, which is the most important position to have in this matchup. And look, he scans the third. He knows exactly what's going on. So Casper playing very well, playing, I would say, playing the mid game perfectly here. And Dragon, of course, setting himself up very well as well, getting the Arbiter and the third base, which in itself is also a very greedy way to play for Protoss because a lot of the times that could get punished by kind of random builds. But I think he read Grime Boss's intentions very well. And so he was able to get this third base. Now he's looking to take a fourth base also with Stasis and Arbiters and a bunch of gates coming. So I think both players kind of setting themselves up as, as macro intensively as they possibly could heading into the mid game here. Well, this is a bit of a weird follow-up from Casper because it looked like we are going to be playing Upgrade Terran, but there's six factories now, but also a Starport is coming down. Mm. So that would be indicative of the upgrades coming in soon. But I'm curious why he needs all six factories right now. We see Dragon putting down fourth Nexus. That's very standard for seeing what he's already seen. Vulture is going to get a couple kills onto these pros, but nothing catastrophic. Still a five-worker lead 
four dragon everything looks fantastic for him and one of the dangers of playing versus two base arbor is you can see that dragon's actually just going into stasis he's not going into recall that means that Casper actually needs to have a lot of units. We saw yesterday Boa just over, over, over and over and over try and throw units into the third base without success. But if you can get a good stasis onto a clump of, clump of tanks, that may be all that Dragon needs to actually push through. So Casper is going to need to be very careful, set up a depot wall, a bunker wall or something, because if he gets like a catch of three tanks right there with one stasis, that's going to be massive loss of DPS. But I don't think Dragon's going to actually do that. I think he's just going to bank this energy, bank up Arbiters. My opinion is once you reach four Arbiters, that's when it gets really scary for Terran. That's when you can yeah. stasis like 15 tanks, no joke. That can eliminate <laughs> almost like 80% of your tanks. So I have a feeling that that's probably what we're going to see. Yeah, and you're totally right, Naokin, pointing out Casper's variation here. He actually got the factories too early. I think... He wanted to eventually go, as he gets a couple of probes here, this is really good for him, but the thing is, it's, a, it's obviously very good for Grind Boss to kill these probes, but Dragon, as he keeps killing probes, man, it's doing way more damage than I would anticipate, but Dragon, because of his opening, because it was so economically focused, he got his third base up really well. I mean, he's still going to have a decent probe count there, and he has four Nexuses to replenish that probe count. So. You know, Vulture Harass at this stage in the game is just not as consequential in terms of, oh wow, you saw a bunch of probes go down, but that's not going to change too much. It's a good trade for Casper now. The problem is, Casper, he delayed his starport, and I think unintentionally so, because he eventually built it anyway, and he didn't go for uh, a two-base attack. So now his upgrades are actually going to be delayed. His vessel just now, come, just now coming out, he doesn't have an EMP to work with. Dragon's gonna come in here and deny. Now Dragon's actually Ooh. losing a lot of units, just A moving to the 6 o'clock. This is a huge blunder from Dragon. I wonder if the nerves are getting to him a bit. Sometimes he does slip up like that. The units kind of wandering around and just dying for no reason. Obviously he was moving his army here to just deny the 6 o'clock and he's still bleeding more units. This is really bad for Dragon. He can't afford to lose units for free here because Casper is getting close to his timing. I mean, he doesn't have plus two on the way at all. He only has plus one armor. He forgot his plus two. That's going to be a massive blunder, but Dragon is just bleeding units left, right, and center. And that's going to be a terrible mistake because now, I mean, he's down a couple supply. He does have oh, no. a lot of stasis to work with, but he can't lose any more units. Yeah, and he's about to have EMP, and that's an arbor that has almost 200 energy. And I think he has EMP, actually. All of these units actually got taken out. So now Casper has a 25 supply lead, but there's a second Arbiter. But just look at how pitiful the actual standing army is for, for Dragon. That's a lot of tanks. Where's the stasis, though? There, an EMP didn't land. There's one of them. Gets his own shuttle, though. But all of the tanks in the front are now isolated. There's only four. But because there's just a lack of units, three goons, that's it. He has to back off. Funny enough, the Arbiters can actually kill the tanks because there's no Goliaths, but he's not using them. But Casper needs to consistently reinforce this because this army is actually not that strong. It's only four tanks. It's only about 12 Vultures, but where's the supply? There's 135 for Dragon. There's only eight in the air. So where's the rest of it? Well, we saw where the rest of it went. He just bled it out trying to cancel that six o'clock. He lost so many units oh this attack. God from Terran is actually kind of pitiful. You never see this many, this few units, but the thing is he just killed so many Protoss units for free that Dragon has no way of defending against this. And behind it, Casper has like 10 factories producing. So if he can successfully reinforce this position, it's gonna be really hard. But at the end of the day, I mean, he still has to push up this no. high ground and that high ground is gonna be very, very important for Dragon in this defense. And it's going to do so much work in cutting the Terran DPS, the Terran army's DPS down. Remember, Terran basically only has ranged units. So every time you take an engagement on a high ground, you're essentially limiting the damage output of the Terran army. And now Dragon's just going to give up that position. He doesn't feel confident in holding it. And I think maybe that is going to be a mistake because now Casper can essentially take the position for himself and use it to his advantage. Dragon kind of 
threatening a counterattack here, but Casper, look, Casper actually Look, Casper's actually a really good player, man. He plays very well in these positions. He's putting down mines everywhere. He's macroing like a god. The only thing is he's not taking his fourth base, but in terms of mining, this is exactly what Terran needs to do. He's playing such an impeccable macro game, and I don't think Dragon's gonna find the opening he's looking for with this counterattack. Yeah, he's gonna try and counterattack, but there's tanks already set up. There's a lot of mines too, and he used all of his stasis energy to deny that attack. Well, now he might have a little bit of energy. He gets the majority of the tanks, but there's so many mines here that there's gonna be big losses for Dragon Zealot eating a lot of the mines. Maybe the Dragoon can do some work here, but more reinforcements from uh, from Casper coming in, but that is a lot of goons on the high ground So he may be able to deny this command center, but he lost his nexus too And meanwhile on the other side of the map Casper is pushing too. He's not just sitting there and waiting So he's gonna try and end this game, but is it too much? Tanks on the high ground not being supported by these vultures on the side. What are they doing? But there's just not enough zealots and maybe Casper can push through but as I say that those are isolated units now and if Protoss turns around, potentially can hit these tanks from the back, and that looks like what he, exactly what he's going to do. Oh my god, I'm getting flashbacks to that Terra versus Boa game on Eclipse, where this is exactly what was happening, kind of a base trade situation, and Terra unfortunately just lost all his tanks, uh, but this time, Casper does not lose his tanks for free, and he has such a sick contain, he's getting turrets up, Getting so many tanks out now, there's not many vultures, but at the same time, there's just not that many Protoss units ready to bust, but nice stasis going down there, and Zealots just walking in the front for free, the vultures were out of position, there were no mines there, oh. but still so many Terran units, the Dragoons coming from behind, and is this going to be enough? Oh my god, massive shots going down onto the Dragoons, they all die, and Casper has just enough to hold on, and Dragon GG's. Yeah, Dragon taps out and Casper with a fantastic push push and a bit of unlucky movement from Dragon to lose so many goons in the early stages to deny the fourth base. But you got to give credit where credit was due. When Casper saw an opening, he pounced on it instantly. And as I was saying, Dragon was just building up that Arbiter count. But unfortunately for him, he hits the stasis, but the army count doesn't exist, so he can never engage it. And now he doesn't have any more stasis to actually deal with the army. I think Dragon, despite losing the units, had a decent shot of holding the attack if he could just stabilize, but not able to do so. The counterattack got the command center, but still just not enough. And Casper's going to make it out in second place in this group today, looking very well, uh, looking very good. And he takes out one of the strongest Protoss players in all of BSL, Dragon. So very impressive. Wow, I, I actually am a bit surprised at how well Casper did because even though he's a great player, like Dragon is really, really good. And he looked good versus Jay Yoon too. Yeah, Casper played phenomenally that game. I think Dragon's gonna be a bit disappointed with his uh, performance today, I think versus Casper, especially that last game. I mean, what was he doing? He just lost so many units for free that should never happen like that and that's literally the only reason he lost that game literally the only reason he lost that game is because he bled two control groups for for free and casper just went and punished him instantly but casper played out of his mind to to make that happen you know it's not it's not trivial for Terran to walk across the map like that and just instantly win the game but anyway guys that's it for group g jayun and casper get out uh i guess Kind of a small upset there, Casper getting out, but I mean, Casper's showing just how strong he is.